Deliverance ministry came into its own in the mid-1900s when men like Ern Blackster carried out itinerant healing ministries. Blackster is known for coining the Jezebel spirit when he attacked feminism, which he interpreted as the spirit of Jezebel. Derek Prince, part of a group of deliverance healers known as the Fort Lauderdale Five, is probably the most important figure in furthering the, the demonology behind deliverance. Some of the leading practitioners today, such as Frank Hammond, pay tribute to the work of Derek Prince. Now, Prince himself claims to have been delivered from a demon of bladder cancer. I could tell you all about it, but it would be best to hear Derek Prince describe it in his own words. Take a listen. But tonight we're going to go further and we're going to do with spiritual warfare on earth. And primarily, the persons with whom we make warfare on earth are demons or evil spirits. And that's what we're going to talk about in a basic and practical way tonight. But I think it would be appropriate for me to begin with a brief up-to-date personal testimony. In September of last year, I was living with one of my married daughters, my only Arab daughter, in the UK. And I went for a medical checkup and was referred to a, what they call in England, a consultant, the top medical rank. And I was diagnosed with cancer of the bladder. This was a very thorough diagnose, diagnosis with a cystoscopy an internal inspection and furthermore they told me it was a dangerous form of cancer because it was liable to spread to other parts of the body. Well I was not afraid, I felt somehow that God was in control and I was living with my, my, one of my married daughters as I said and she had a friend, the family had a friend who was a curate. Now I don't think most Americans know what a curate is. A curate is about the lowest rung of the officialdom of the, um, what do you call it? Anglican Church, what do you call it here? The Episcopal Church, thank you. So I was with my in my daughter's house and we had a phone call from a young man, a curate in the Anglican Church, young enough to be my grandson. And he said, I would like to come and pray for you. May I come? So, of course, I said, yes, you're welcome. He was a little timid. He sat at the opposite end of the living room. And after a while, I said to him, now, I want you to understand, I'm not necessarily expecting that if you pray for me, I'll instantly be totally healed of cancer. But come and pray anyhow. Did you hear that? Prince just admitted that he didn't necessarily have the faith to be healed. Isn't that contradictory to what we often hear out of these snake oil salesmen? This flies in the face of those who blame a lack of healing on a lack of faith by the possessed or oppressed individual. But let's keep going. So he came, I was sitting in a chair, he stood beside me, put his hand on my shoulder and began to pray. And it was like, I can only say like cats fighting inside my chest. I have never experienced such intense conflict within me. And I let out a loud, prolonged, sustained roar. Not just a shout, it was a roar. And at that moment, I knew that I had been delivered from a demon of cancer. And there it is. Prince said he knew at that moment that he had been delivered, not healed from cancer, but delivered from a demon of cancer. Now, I want to park here for a minute. This is what deliverance ministry is all about. This is what to expect from Greg Locke and D.R. Harrison at their deliverance service in Atlanta. Now, before you accuse me of exaggerating, listen to Greg Locke discussing the seven most ridiculous objections to deliverance ministry. This is number six. Every problem is in a spirit. How many times you hear that one? Ain't everything a demon. I know. I get it. But we love to use that as a cop-out to not mess with any demons. Well, you know, Brother Locke, not every sickness is demonic. Well, then how about you just take authority 
over every sickness as if it were and see how many more people get healed in your church than they have been for the last 20 years dying of cancer all over the place. Now, what have we heard so far? We've heard Derek Prince say that he was not healed of cancer, but delivered of a demon of bladder cancer. We've heard Greg Locke say that cancer and many other diseases are in fact demonic. Listen to this quote from an article in Charisma magazine titled, The Holy Spirit Says Annihilate the Spirit of Cancer. There is a spirit of infirmity called cancer running rampant across the land. When I was in prayer the other day, I heard the Lord say, Annihilate the forces of darkness of cancer. Take that same energy and stamina and attack the spirit of cancer. Now, I pasted the link for the article that I just referenced down in the description below. And that article provides six steps for annihilating the demon of cancer. Number one, pray offensively. Now, simple statements of declaration like, I bind and restrict a spirit of cancer and affirmity from attacking me in Jesus' name. I speak and declare my T-cells destroy any cancer attempting to invade my body in Jesus' name. I speak and decree that I live in divine health. My body functions properly and grows tumors, blood disorders, and anything related to cancer or any other sickness and disease cannot infiltrate my physical being. My bone marrow is strong and healthy. I am bought and paid for by the blood of Christ. Number two, repent any unforgiveness, offense, bitterness, or resentment. A simple heartfelt prayer spoken out loud can deactivate the demonic realm. Number three, self-forgiveness can be one of the hardest things to release. Speak out and declare audibly, I forgive myself. And keep saying it until you mean it. Feel a spiritual shift, feel a demonic release, or have peace. Number four, examine yourself for any sin or disobedience in your life, which are an open doorway to the enemy. Number five, repent, renounce, and rebuke generational curses. The spirit of cancer can be generational. We do not have to receive that report, according to the article. Break agreement with a spirit of cancer in your generational line by praying and declaring. Number six, search for and expose any ungodly ties. Now, this is why people get cancer. This is why people get the demon of cancer. Repent of any ungodly relationships. Repent of any words you have spoken negatively about another's cancer diagnosis. Remove any idolization of people in your life. I renounce and repent of the sin of idolatry and any ungodly relationships and feelings I've had towards another. I rebuke the devourer against my life. I take authority over sickness and disease and command it that it will have no hold on me in the name of Jesus. Friends, this is how to be delivered from the demon of cancer according to Deliverance Ministry. Now let me offer a trigger warning because this is about to get plain. Some of you may be offended by what I'm about to say, but it needs to be said. You've heard how Derek Prince said he was delivered of the demon of bladder cancer, even though he didn't necessarily have faith to be healed. You've heard Locke admit that he believes in a demon of cancer. So I must ask this question. Why is a family member of DR fighting an aggressive form of cancer and do Greg and DR believe that this family member has a disease of cancer or a demon of cancer? I know that sounds cruel, but that is a fair question. I remind you again that Derek Prince was delivered without having the faith, his own words, without having the faith to necessarily be healed. Why do these two men not cast out the demon of cancer if they have that ability? Now, my heart breaks for this family and for this one who is suffering. But empathy and sympathy should never stop us from presenting the truth in love. Now, how do these deliverance ministers reconcile what they preach and teach against reality when it hits so close to home? So I ask you to join with me in prayer for DR's family member who is dealing with cancer. My heart is broken over that situation. And you may ask, why would I even make a video such as this given that sensitivity? Well, the reason is because it is my earnest prayer that DR and Greg are convicted by the Holy Ghost of God of their unscriptural teaching 
and its incoherence with real life, especially when it hits so close to home. So will you pray with me? Father, I pray for DR's family member dealing with cancer. Lord, I do not have the power to heal, but you do. But nevertheless, not my will, but your be done. I pray that you would receive glory and honor through the infirmity that this one is dealing with. Father, if you choose to heal, we'll give you glory. If you choose not to heal, I pray that you would comfort and that you would be with that individual and that you would give them grace for this hour. I pray for these that are teaching that cancer is not a disease, but a demon. Lord, we find no scriptural evidence to support that. Lord, we find no evidence in the scriptures that these two men have the ability to cast out such demons. Father, I pray that you would open their eyes, open their hearts, convict them. Lord, I pray that they would repent of this false teaching and that you would be glorified through the revival of repentance in these men. Lord, would you grant that in Jesus' name? 